All right, so now we're going to go through how banks actually create money. So this is based off the fractional reserve system. And what it means is that banks only need to keep a fraction of their deposits on hand to give out to people in case they come in and ask for money. So we can introduce this idea of desired reserves. So this is the amount of cash that banks wish to keep on hand to cover daily transactions. That is, people coming in and asking for money. So then we can look at the desired reserve ratio, which is the percent of demand deposits that they wish to keep in terms of cash uh, to cover daily transactions. And this is equal to the, the amount of desired reserves divided by the demand deposits. And this is also known as R. So looking at an example, suppose that uh, R equals 20. So the desired reserve ratio is 20% and demand deposits equal 100. Therefore, the desired reserve would equal $100 times 20%, which equals $20. Uh, therefore, this leaves them $80 to loan out. So this $80 then is excess reserves, so it's reserves, uh, reserves above and beyond what they wish to keep, and so they will loan it out to maximize their profit. Now let's suppose um, R equals 20 and I deposit $100. What we're going to do here is show how banks actually create money or uh, increase the money supply. So I go in and I deposit my $100 that I find in my pocket. So in my account, I go in and the, the deposit goes up $100. Then on this side, we used to call it cash, but now let's think of it and call it reserves. So I go in and deposit, so the cash in the bank goes up $100, my account goes up $100. Now the bank only wants to keep 20% of that, so they only want to keep $20. So what they're going to do then is they're going to issue a loan for $80. And so when they issue the loan, they're going to deposit that into a check into a checking account and what's happened right here now is that the money supply as a result of making that loan has increased by eighty dollars now here's where the increase in money supply gets interesting so now the loan has been issued so let's say they write a check and so the check is written and so what happens is that when the check is drawn the $80 is pulled out, so reserves are down to 20, so they're at their desired reserve ratio. The, the money's pulled out of that account. So now what happens is it's, that check is deposited at Bank B. So now we've got a deposit at Bank B of $80, and their reserves go up by $80. Now in Bank B, if their uh, desired reserve ratio is 20%, they're going to say, hey, you know what, we've got extra money here. So we're going to create a loan of $64, and so we're going to deposit that into an account for this person to use. And look what's happened again, is that we've got another money supply increase. This time, it increases by $64. Now, it doesn't stop there, <clears throat> because we can go look now at Bank C. So let's say this person takes the loan, uh, they write a check, and so it's drawn, so that goes out, and then their reserves go down to uh, $16. Now over here at Bank C, that check for $64 is deposited, and so there's an increase in $64. And then on the asset side, their reserves, the reserves go up by $64. Now again, this bank says, hey, you know, we've got excess reserves here. We can make out a loan, so we only need to keep 20%, so we're going to loan out 80%, so they can make a loan of 51.20. So they make a loan, and then their deposits go up by 51.20. And look, here again, we've got the money supply increases yet again. And so what we have is this multiple effect of issuing the first loan of $80 creates this ongoing multiple effect of increasing the money supply. And now we can continue and go through a whole series of banks, each bank then just keeping 
of, of reserves and loaning out 80%. And this can go on, and what it has is we call that the monetary multiplier. So the monetary multiplier is directly related to the amount of the reserve ratio. That's actually, it's an inverse relationship. So it can be written in an equation form of the monetary multiplier equals 1 over the desired reserve ratio, or alternatively, multi monetary multi multiplier, M, equals 1 over R. So looking back in our example, uh, we would have our M would equal 1, and our R was 20%. Therefore, M equals 1 divided by 0 0.20 would equal 5. So back to our initial um, example, with the maximum amount of money that can be created would equal the initial excess reserves times M. So if you recall, that initial excess reserves was 80. Uh, M is 5. Therefore, that initial deposit of $100, which created 80 excess reserves, which was loaned out, multiplied by the money monetary multiplier, tells us that the maximum amount of money that can be created from that transaction is actually $400, much, much more than that initial deposit of the $100, which created the $80 in excess reserves. So that is exactly how our chartered banks create money uh, by loaning it out through the fractional reserve system.